Welcome back, everybody. It is Friday, the end of, well, it's getting close to the end of September, but it's it's Friday. That's all that really matters, I think. Yep. I don't know about where you live, but fall has actually occurred here. Not here. It is it was 40 something at night, like it 46, 44. 83 freedom units outside, which is about 28 <laughs> communist yeah, units. Yeah, yeah. So we got that's we what got yeah, that. it's going to be warm over the weekend and into Monday. But mm -hmm. last two nights have been in the 40s. Huh? It's been chilly. So, Paul, I've come to a revelation since we've talked last, mm -hmm. which was yesterday. Um, <laughs> right. It might have been earlier today, but yeah. It might even actually, but yeah. Anyways, so I, I think the Apple Watch is the new iPad. Explain. Yep. So here's, here's the deal. When you go to buy a tablet right now, you buy an iPad or other. Okay. When you go to buy a smartwatch, you buy an Apple Watch or yep. other. They, yep. they are going to, because there was talk yesterday or this week about how Google kind of shut down their uh, smartwatch right. investigations or discovery hardware, whatever you want to call it. And so they clearly don't think they're going to make a bunch of money on it. Um, there's mm -hmm. always going to be the Fitbits and Samsung will always have a thing. And I'm not saying those guys are going away, but I think it's Apple's market to eat much like the tablet market has. And it, that's yeah. just going to kind of be it. I agree. Smart. It's true. I was thinking the other day there was a story about Apple or uh, Google in 2016 was about to release smartwatches mm -hmm. and then didn't. And it was, there was an interesting little tidbit in there. It said something about the LG smartwatches uh, that came out that, that Christmas season. And yep. I distinctly remember them pushing those very hard. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, regardless. Anyway, my, my thought about that was, you know, there, there are two areas where Google has really failed the ecosystem and that's mm -hmm. watches and tablets, right? Yeah. You know, obviously, you can put Android in a tablet, and I, the the more modern rationale for an Android tablet is really to get a Chrome, you know, mm -hmm. two in one or tablet, whatever. But the, the the they should have done they should have jumped in with both feet in both things, should have taken years of loss just to get to the point where Apple was a couple yeah. of years ago, right? By by ceding this to Apple, they have just they've given up. Like it's yeah. it's over, which proves your point. You know, like Google should have. Like, uh, how do we say this? Like, um, uh, I don't know. Some, it, like some, uh, Google does night mode great on their cameras, right? Mm -hmm. So a year later, Samsung comes out with a night mode and, um, you know, or it doesn't matter who. OnePlus comes yeah. out with a night mode and they're garbage. Like, they're terrible. Yeah. And, of course, at first, you're going to really get punched in the gut over that because it's like, yeah, well, this other company does this thing better. But then you mm -hmm. improve it, right? Yep. And we're, we're at the point now where other companies are doing it just as well or better in some cases. And that's the thing that Google didn't do with the watch, and I don't think with Android, uh, Android yeah. tablets, um, because the problem. I see this a lot. You know, I see this on Chromebooks like this week when I've been using Chromebooks again a lot. Um, you know, you download like uh, one one drive is a good example. Mm -hmm. right? So OneDrive is a native Android app. You run it; it runs full screen. It looks yep. it looks off. You know, yeah. So you resize it because you know you hit the restore button essentially. Mm -hmm. And of course, what it comes down to is it's a, it's a phone app. It, come, it shrinks yeah. down to a little phone shape, and then it looks completely normal. Hmm. And it runs fine, but you're never going to get people to embrace this form factor unless those things look and run natively on that size screen. Sure. So, Apple, you know, whether they did it themselves, I mean, or I just I, I do feel very strongly that the developer base just like the user base is a lot mm -hmm. more engaged on the ios side than it is on the android side yeah I would agree whatever the that. reason yeah those things have happened sure and, and i agree with what you said you know fitbit will they are they're evolving their smart uh watch platform it's actually pretty great yeah they're not going um, anywhere but they're not going to be the dominant player no never never they're not even it's not even going to be close it's yeah it's going to be apple with like 70 to 80 percent of the market and then a bunch of really small players yeah, the the way I kind of came to this last night, in, that, because this is what I do and I have no life or anything else like mm -hmm. that, is I was sitting there thinking, what would be harder for me personally to get rid of, my iPhone or an I or the watch? And I could get rid of the phone much easier than I could get rid of the watch. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and, and there's also a there's something going on with the Apple Watch that paralleled what happened earlier with the iPhone, where. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, it was very much a companion device. If you wanted to get content on or off of yep. it or sync it or whatever, you had to do that through a cable to the PC or the Mac, you know. Mm -hmm. And over time, of course, it became a standalone device. And these days, I bet most people probably never go near their computer with the phone. Like, it just right. does all its stuff up in the cloud, you know. 
Yep. And uh, I'm not an Apple Watch user, but it's very clear to me from the outside that with every rev of the software and mm -hmm. to a lesser extent the hardware, um, it is becoming more and more of a standalone device. Yeah. You know. Well, and it and that's kind of the thing because here's the perfect example. We walk our dog most nights when it's not seven million degrees outside, and I leave yeah. my phone at home and I just take the watch, and right. it reduces. I hate to like even mention this, but everybody knows that feeling when you find out you're like, oh crap, I left my phone at home. And right. if your tire blows, you're screwed. Mm -hmm. um, what this does obviously is it keeps you connected to the world in a, in a very small way. Like I can make phone calls and I can, I can respond to an emergency text message or something like that, but I'm not really yeah. going to get distracted by it. It's just, it's notifications only f for the ones yeah. that I've set up and that's it. And no, oh, there's a, there's yeah. a freedom to that. I mean, yep. it's, um, as a guy, you know, that thing where you kind of pat yourself down, like, oh shit, where's yep. my you know wallet or whatever. Um, I mean, I've experienced what you're talking about, not with the phone, but with my wallet. Um, mm -hmm. and we do this on home shops, you know, years ago, if you go back like 15 years, 10 years, whatever, I would bring like a, a during the summer where you don't have like a jacket or something where you can hide a wallet, you don't want to get pickpocketed in Europe or whatever. Yep. Um, I would bring like a, like kind of a money belt thing that you wear under your waist in your around your waist, like under your clothes. And if I needed to get a credit card or money out, I could do that in, in private and yep. you can still carry this up. These days, last couple of years, you know, we go on a trip or even like the weekend we were just in D.C., mm -hmm. we're walking around in the world and wearing shorts. My wife is going to carry a purse. <laughs> she has credit cards. Yep. No one's going to ever need my ID for anything. And I just bring the camera or the phone, yep. you know, and it, it's free. At first, you still, yep. you, it's like, oh, crap. Oh, yeah, no, that's OK. But it's, um, it, it, you know. Of course, my wife doesn't get to benefit from this. <laughs> I'm sure mm -hmm. she's resentful. But I mean, you know, and when I go for a walk, I only bring the the phone, which I listen yeah. to like audiobooks or whatever, and mm -hmm. you know, headphones. But I don't have my wallet. <laughs> you know, yep. obviously, like I'm walking around the neighborhood. Um, it's fine, but it's nice when you can do that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's my take on on the Apple Watch, and I think it'll be around for a while. I'm I'm not planning to get the five. I, there's not enough reason to go for I was a curious if you're going to change your mind on that um, and have you thought uh, what, what's happened with the iPhone if anything no, we haven't done anything nothing yeah it, it's I'm I am not planning to get a pro I that is not on my agenda it's just up to my wife yeah um, and so I, I'm not going to push the conversation but when she's when, when yep. she's ready Paul when she's, she's ready, ready. <laughs> nice we will yep yep that's how we approach everything in marriage um, yeah actually it, a lot of it kind of not that the phone is all that expensive, but we're doing some expensive stuff around the house. And I think we're kind of just waiting for the dust to settle yep. on the, on the yep. finances to make sure that everything is somewhat peachy and not too cryy. <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> not too like cryy is a word, yeah. but I think yeah. people understand what that means when it comes to paying for stuff. So, Oh yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. I, I, uh, my iPhone will not arrive for weeks, which is aggravating. I could probably drive out to the Apple store right now and just buy one, but mm -hmm. I, it's not a, I, you know, there's one plus thing happening. There's all kinds of phones happening, you know, so it's like I'm, yep. I'm swimming in phones. It's not a big deal. But increasingly, it does appear that the camera system on the pros are uh, uh, like dramatically better. Yeah, mine, which is, is very unusual. I apparently bought the worst phone with the worst or with the worst camera that, you know, that's what I have. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> comparatively, I guess. Comparatively. Uh, yeah. Year over year. It's unusual, right? Mo a yeah. lot of times, you know, most times, it's just an evolutionary thing. But it looks like this is actually a big deal. And for video, selfies, for all kinds of reasons. But um, so that's interesting. And then I would also say uh, this will impact your wife. I mean, increasingly, it's it become mm -hmm. obvious that the, the real value in this lineup, just like last year, is the low-end model. Yep, and it's even more true this year than it was yep. before. You know, so that's that's neat. I mean, I, yep. and I like I said, I, that's a phone that's going to last for years and years. Yep, that's going to be a good one. Fully agree. I think it's, anyways. Well, whenever we, whenever we, and by we, I think it's more so whenever my wife remembers that she needs a new phone. Yeah. But, uh, yep. We'll puts on down to the local Verizon shop and see what what unlimited plan they can shove us into because they have like <laughs> seven. Yeah, but which one of the unlimited asterisk plans yeah that, that's, so, what, that's what they should be called is unlimited asterisk because that's right. what it is because you're at verizon yeah it's unbelievable so um speaking of cry -y, um <laughs> as you know we had the guy come out um there's a, a couple of companies in the neighborhood mm -hmm. that have gone around and inspected all the houses and they report back to their insurance yep. companies and half the roofs in the neighborhood have been replaced 
Um, I don't know for a fact. I'll have to ask my father. This is either the original roof on the house, which would make it 35 years old, frankly, but wow. I suppose it's possible. Uh, or it was replaced when my father bought the house, which would have been 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I don't have any memory or knowledge of that. I don't, yeah. I don't know. It's not a spring chicken. Can... Yeah. But I also feel very strongly that what's happening in my neighborhood is tantamount to insurance fraud. And that. Oh, yes. Very much. I look at these roofs yep. and I think to myself, I, I, I'm not seeing it, you know? Mm -hmm. So this morning, after a couple of delays, the guy representing our insurance company came to do his inspection. And yeah. uh, so he's up on the roof today. And I was leaving to go to the gym. I had to kind of maneuver around the, his vehicle, which is fine. But I noticed, like, my wife had come to the door. And I was thinking, man, I just missed the, the part where he says, yeah, y your roof is fine. It's old, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I'm, tra I'm driving to the gym. And my phone makes a little sound. My wife has texted me. And this is what she wrote. <laughs> she says, so we need a new roof, new gutters, new downspouts, and new windows frames on half of the windows. Also, wow. there's a spot of siding that needs to be repaired. Spot. And our insurance company is going to cover all of this. Wow. <laughs> I was like, what? So I called her back and I was like, are you serious? And she's like, yeah. She goes, he found more stuff than the hmm. guy who did the original roof inspection did. Um, so I guess it... You know, whatever we'll pay the deductible and get like yeah, the whole I mean, that's, thing replaced. I mean, so we did on ours, crazy. except our roof was actually leaking. That's what why we ended up calling because yeah. like if there's water coming through there, there's clearly some sort oh, of oh, actually, you know what? We have a water leak too. Hmm. Um, we don't see it very often because it's in the upstairs, uh, like the other bathroom, not the master bath. But um, and yeah. there's no up there. You know, like we have <laughs> this house is like the it's like the ho the the hotel from The Shining, like half of it's shut off. You know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think this summer when Mark was here, it, we had a really serious rainstorm one day, and he's like, hey, there's like a drip coming into the bathroom. And we were like, huh. <laughs> so it was one of those things. It was not big. It was not a big deal. And it only happened, like, it happened, I guess, twice we noticed it. it I don't know if it was the first time or whatever, but yeah. um, I guess just by virtue of the roof being replaced, like, that will get fixed. I think it was something like a, you know, obviously something happened up there, but mm -hmm. I think that this will probably fix that because it, it might be like around one of the little, you know, like a vent pipe or something, maybe some of the shielding, yeah. whatever came off or something. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Well, fun. Yeah. You know what else is fun, Paul? <laughs> what? UWP. Yeah. Right. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> for those people who are premium subscribers to the site, um, mm -hmm. I, in the first newsletter from about a week and a half ago, I wrote about a, uh, a conversation that, you, that Brad was part of on, on Twitter yeah. the, the week before, where I had inadvertently closed a tab in a browser, in Chrome or New Edge, it doesn't matter which one. And, um, yeah, and I know how to get it back. I know how to get it back. But as someone who types a lot and, and uses a lot of keyboard commands, I thought to myself, why can't I, I tried it, you know, Control Z, like, why wouldn't that bring it back? You know, mm -hmm. I have my own method for bringing back the tab. Um, I got a bunch of responses. Brad's response was the answer, which is actually there is a, uh, a keyboard yeah. shortcut for that. Control and shift it's Control T. Shift T, right? Yep. Which makes sense on some weird level, I guess, but um, it's kind of like using start to shut down a computer because Control T is new tab. So Control Shift T is obviously mm -hmm. old tab. I don't know. Like, I don't know how you justify that. But, but clearly, when it happened, whatever browser, whatever one engineer, whatever browser maker, Microsoft or Netscape, probably, whenever they did it, Control-Z was implemented in some way that they were like, we can't add this to the undo stack and eh, screw it, we'll just do this other thing. And then yeah. everyone copied it because everyone copies whoever's number one and here we are. And most browser makers use that same keyboard combination that Brad mentioned. But here's the thing. A browser is just a software application. It can be right. implemented any way you want. There's no such thing as a system-wide undo stack Mm -hmm. it's application based. So the application can decide how this works. And so I was like, I, I, I appreciate that there is one. So that's good. It's a non discoverable thing like most keyboard shortcuts, but everyone knows control Z. So that's the thing. Yeah. I, I, I still think it should be control Z. That was my argument. And I got a bunch of response types. And I got, we kind of went back and forth, you know, there's a bunch mm -hmm. of people like, did you know you can right click? Did you know you can blah, blah, blah? And yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I'm just saying I, <laughs> I do it mm -hmm. this way. Like why, you know, it should be consistent. That's all. Anyway, I happened to write about this and, and the, the range of response types you can get. And um, I, I guess there was a, I don't read, every once in a while something will happen. Like, um, uh, I, don't, I don't even know like what types of things these could be. Some kind of 
online thing where some team at Microsoft mm -hmm. talks about something, or there'll be like, a, like the new version of the uh, uh, the Microsoft not Teams uh, Microsoft To Do comes out and it's like yeah. oh it's UWP app you know like I thought UWP was dead Paul <laughs> you know and people get really pissy about this like they get really personal. And it's always like, I think that you are just saying what you think and that no one told you this. And it's like, guys, I, like, first of all, I don't, whatever you think of me, I don't make stuff up for one thing. I, I, and certainly mm -hmm. I, I, I speculate as much as anyone. I will write an editorial where I'm like, I am of the opinion yeah. that the Microsoft store is on the way out or that the UWP is dead or whatever the topic might be. But at Microsoft Build, a senior Microsoft executive, someone who could, in fact, kill UWP, stated off the record <laughs> and asked not to be cited uh, that UWP was dead and that this person was the one who had killed UWP. This is a fact. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've reported. Um, but people, you know, every time there's some other UWP thing, people will say, but you said, or and it's worse than you said, a lot of time it's just personal attack, personal yeah. attack. You know, I, I don't know what I'm talking about, blah, 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 whatever it is. So I just here's here's what I've kind of come to on this. Um, first of all, I'd love to go to Microsoft. I'm going to go to Microsoft and see if I can't get some kind of official, you know, interview or statement or something. Mm -hmm. But I don't expect them to say, "Oh yeah, but yeah, UWP is dead." Here, here's what I th and we talked the other day, like uh, what my expectation was about the future of the Microsoft um, yep. software development program, you know, platform, whatever. Um, I think what happened was UWP was their platform. It mm -hmm. was. They really tried to jam this down people's throats. Yeah. It was Windows 10 specific, so it left out a huge chunk of the PC user base. And there's this, you know, one Windows thing where they wanted apps to work everywhere, mm -hmm. which is completely understandable. Um, I feel like, I feel, and this is my opinion, but I feel like one of the reasons UWP failed is because, because it had to do that least common denominator thing where it worked on tablets, phones, Xboxes, Surface Hubs, uh, embedded devices, whatever the things were, mm -hmm. um, th that it could never... It wasn't ever designed to create like professional user experiences like you see in Microsoft Office or, um, you know, standard desktop apps. It was more designed for these big touch points, so big buttons, big round, you know, silly looking buttons. And I, I was of the opinion for many years, like they should have done a pro version of UWP that was just for the desktop, you know, where they could, you could make professional apps with this thing. I don't have no problem with the UWP. I just, right. I don't feel like they ever paid much attention to it. So... My guess today is that Microsoft finally, well, we know that Microsoft finally came to the notion that tons of developers are not coming on board with this thing. We have to start supporting other frameworks, other styles of programming, because we're losing people. Yep. And they brought WPF and WinForms back from the dead, fully supported, and they said all of this stuff that used to be unique to UWP, we're going to port it back to Win32, we're going to port it back to WinForms, we're going to port it, put, you know, WPF, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, Microsoft killing UWP doesn't mean that it just suddenly disappears from the earth. It's still there. There's code out in the world. People have written apps with this stuff. Yep. They're going to update those apps. They will update UWP for some amount of time, as they will these other things with new features that exist in Windows that come mm -hmm. to new versions of Windows. What is dead is the notion that UWP is the platform. It right. is not the platform. It's gone. They're not doing that anymore. I mean, and I'm not saying this in some kind of Weasley way, like, look, we can all be right. I'm, I'm just trying to understand it because, again, I didn't invent this notion. I'm just telling you what I was told, mm -hmm. right? So how do we make sense of it? Like, what's the, how does this work? You know, when Microsoft shifted from, I have to like, think of something, from WinForms to WPF, WinForms didn't just disappear. Right. People had written code to that framework, and it was updated for some period of time as well. That's how this works. So I, I, I guess my only issue with all this is I, I want to know like you do. I'm curious what's going on. If it works out that Microsoft is like, actually, UWP is a first-class citizen. It will be for the foreseeable future. It doesn't impact me. I don't, I don't yeah. want it to die. I'm not, I don't wish it ill. I don't make fun of people who choose UWP over other frameworks or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't care. It's fine. Good. Yeah. But I, I'm just telling you what I was told. Yeah. I, it, people have a hard time with that. I don't know why. Well, I look forward to them at Build announcing the new framework, which is going to be called Win128 apps. And, uh, <laughs> that's going to encompass everything. <laughs> yep. Well, and there then, is a new thing. So I, 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 I said this earlier, like um, mm -hmm. uh, 
.NET Core becomes .NET and .NET yeah. 5, right? Yep. Um, I, I really do sort of think like uh, .NET 5 will be kind of the basis for this thing. It, it, people call it like WinUI is this thing, and WinUI is a you can sort of um, probably choose your own framework, you know, for mm -hmm. this kind of a thing. There, mm -hmm. There's a matrix of compatibility, um, and obviously, if you need to target Hololens or uh, Surface Hub to some degree, although I think desktop apps really work there too. Um, you know, phone's gone, but Xbox, whatever. I mean, you have these choices, and UWP will be one of them. Actually, in Hololens, UWP is probably the only choice. Sure. So it doesn't go away. It's just not the strategy anymore. It is. I, I mean, it it is I, in agreement with what you say. It's um, it's they can't I, I kill just, it. It's just like Windows Phone. Never so, you can you can still go buy a Windows Phone today. I bet. Uh, yikes! <laughs> I bet you can. It's still yeah. technically there. Anyway, hey, listen, sure. People are writing apps today for the Commodore sixty four. People are writing yep. them for the Amiga. You know, yes, uh, I'm sure someone will come up with a great new Windows Phone app a couple of years from now. But it won't be like Adobe or Microsoft. It's going right. to be Bob over in Illinois. Or whatever, um, because if these you are things Bob never in truly... Illinois. That's Paul at Throck. <laughs> right. Um, no, but that's it's going to be an individual. That was my yep. point. Um, so, I agree. So, that's all. I agree. Anyways, in the last topic du jour, Paul, um, trying the new the, well, the new beta of Call of Duty is out. Uh, Microsoft, yep. in yep. traditional fashion, or somebody on the launch team forgot to say, "Oh yeah, Xbox gets it at one p.m." Um, and it went live around like I, I, four p.m. or something. Yeah, it was much later in the day. Yeah. Anyway, so you... What do you uh, think? I'm curious what you think, first of all, because so, I know you're not a Call of Duty guy. Yeah, well, I used to be. And then the Battle Royale genre came out, and so I've played a bunch of that. Um, I don't mind this one. This one seems to be okay. Um, realistically, here's the bigger thing that determines what games we play. It's like, so I play with a group much like you do with your Halo. It's like, there's like six guys that I play with. And if everyone wants to play Call of Duty, we'll play it. If everyone wants to play Apex, then we'll play it. Like, it's... I could play Call of Duty this one for a while and be happy. Um, yeah, it's fine. It's if you like first-person shooter, you're gonna like the game. It's pretty simple. Yeah, that's fair. I don't like that during the beta you're forced into whatever game they happen to choose. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't you can like filter that. it. You can filter it. Oh, you can. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll if have to go if back you go to quick that. play and then you hit right, there's a filter and you can just turn off everything except. Uh, for I gotta team tell you match. how wonderful it is. On the every fourth game, it's just team deathmatch, and I'm like. Mm. Um, and I, you know, it looks realistic ish. It's, um, yeah. plays a little different, you know, the last couple of games. I yep. spent some time over the past 24 hours going back and replaying a bunch of the old games, all the way back to Modern Warfare 3, but also, uh, some of the, uh, the different mm -hmm. Black Ops, uh, the, some of the weird ones like Advanced Warfare and Infinity Warfare, the, the ones with the wall, the wall yeah. running and things like that. And it's just, it, I guess all of these things kind of feel different in their own way, but. Mm. That that you get used to that you know, yeah. As it goes, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it seems it seems good. You know, it's it's, it's going to be it another a, ticks the box for Call of Duty, and uh, you know what's happened though. You know, it's funny. So you play Battle Royale, and I got to tell you that that genre and Fortnite mm. in particular, probably, but let's just say Battle Royale has had such a a negative impact on Call of Duty that I I could just scream, and I. <laughs> I, I've seen it destroying uh, the Black Ops 4. Going back and playing some, not the real old ones, like they're never yeah. going to change Modern Warfare 3, but um, uh, Infinity Warfare falls into this category. Um, Black Ops 3 does. I don't remember exactly which games, but what they've done is, <laughs> like, if you get into a lobby, you'll see all the guys. Like, back when this game first launched, and, and with all previous Call of Duty games, what you're looking at is a bunch of guys usually, but then they added women at some point because, of course, you get a BPC and women are in the military and that's fine. And But they're military people. Mm -hmm. like they, They're geared out like military people. If you get into a game today in some of these games, including Black Ops 4, what you see is this nonsense collection of like a, um, like a clown character, uh, a woman zombie, a, like they're wearing colorful outfits. They have little dances they can do. And so you're sitting there waiting for the game to start. And you can hear, like, there's music playing, and this guy's, like, break dancing, And it's like, this this is a military shooter. Yeah, what is happening yeah, the, here? Yeah, uh, the memes are invading. The... Oh, God, it's the worst. And <laughs> it is fascinating to me that this is, n it's not just this game. Yeah. It's like game. I said, because I've been, it's so, at least the last couple, you know, some number. I don't remember the exact number of them. But, 
like this, this is like like weird. Like you, it's like a military shooter, and this girl in a dress runs by mm-hmm. with pom poms or whatever, and you're like, what is, what is this? <laughs> like, what, and she's got an Uzi, of course, you know. I don't know. I don't understand. It's a good first world problem. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> You got anything else for today, Paul? I just have one thing, and I, I, yep. I'm, I'm actually wondering if anyone has a, an answer to this. Um, one thing I've been meaning to do is um, implement, if you will, this Thunderbolt 3 dock that I got from OWC. And what, what that means is, instead of having a computer under my desk, under the monitor, mm-hmm. I'll have this thing. Yeah. And this thing will be connected to all my peripherals, like the microphone, this, well, the speakers into this um, screen, but you know, whatever mm-hmm. you know, whatever the things are. And the idea is that no matter which com- which computer I'm using, it will connect to it with the one cable, right? The USB C slash Thunderbolt three cable. Now, as you know, and as some people listening, watching probably know, some weeks ago, a month ago, whatever it was, I started using the NUC, and the NUC mm-hmm. does have a USB C slash Thunderbolt three port in the back. It is Thunderbolt three, like I said, it should work. I also have had terrible PC reliability problems up to this point. And so just getting this thing working, like once it was working, I kind of didn't want to screw with it. I you know, know what I mean? Right? Mm-hmm. But me being me, yesterday I'm like, no, I got to do this thing. So I unplugged everything from the NUC. I plugged it all into the dock, um, connected the, you know, dock goes to the display. Now the, plug the USB C port into the computer. Thing comes up, perfect. Everything looks great. I'm hitting the space bar to log in. Nothing's happening. I wiggle the mouse, and I realize there's no mouse cursor. And I'm like, huh. I'm like, I don't know, driver or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So I, I have a, the Microsoft uh, set that I use. The keyboard mouse set has a proprietary dongle, USB base. So I unplugged it, plugged it into the NUC. It works fine. Mm. So I'm like, huh. So then I did this. I tried a ThinkPad. I tried a MacBook Air. Actually, that's all I tried. And uh, eventually I want to get to the, well, I was going to say Chromebook, but actually I don't think I did try Chromebook. Um, Perfect. They work perfect. Everything Mm -hmm. plugged into the dock, everything works fine. The mouse works, the keyboard, the camera, everything works fine. It's only the NUC that does not work. And I'm just curious if anyone can think of any reason why, because I got to tell you, that alone makes me not want to use this because I want to kind of want to be able to switch back and forth between computers. I, t- I review computers all the time. It'd actually be kind of useful to be able to... Yeah, just pull out the one cord, yeah. plug it in, and be done. Yep. So if anyone knows why it wouldn't... I've, I've you know, Obviously, I've rebooted. I've, I looked mm-hmm. for software on either site um, to see if there was something. I, I don't know. So it, I should say the display works. Like I said, so the display pass-through, that works mm-hmm. fine. But nothing mm-hmm. else plugged into that thing will work with the NUC, only the display. Yeah. And I cannot explain that. If we had licensings to the licensings to the X file themes, I'd start playing that right now and see if we can't. Uh... Yeah, I, at first I obviously thought it was the dock, and then right, I that's it, what whichever. But yep, it's clearly it's not. not. It's clearly like going to sleep, or that port's going to sleep, or something. I don't know what it is. Well, the display work, like I said, display works, and I looked it up. I looked up the NUC. It's um, uh, full Thunderbolt three. It should everything should work. Yeah. Um, the dock itself, it has two Thunderbolt three ports. One of them supports, I think it's 85 watts. You could even mm-hmm. potentially power, I don't know, the NUC if it supports it, but you could yeah. you know, power pretty beefy laptops uh, if you you know, if you know use the right cable, the uh, right port with the right cable, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. So anyway, if anyone has any ideas, I'm, yeah. I don't know. Because I really, it's like everything worked. Everything worked. I had to, um, I had to replug everything to do the podcast, you know? Yep. Well. Sucks. There we go. Yeah. That's all we got. Yeah. So I'm going to spend Good. the weekend playing with Thunderbolt 3 and with the uh, Call of Duty. Thing. Fantastic. And everybody else, thanks for tuning in. That wraps it up this time. We'll catch uh, We should all be back here on Monday, provided we don't get hit by lightning. <laughs>